How can health systems transform operations via real-time locating innovations? According to our next guest, Karen Hewitt, Senior Director of Consulting Services at Centrac, it starts with responsibly harnessing actionable data to drive productivity, cost savings, and elevated care experiences. With over 37 years improving hospital operations and four years as a health system chief innovation officer, Karen brings in valuable wisdom that is helping empower healthcare with actionable data. Currently, she leads Centrac teams that are helping over 2,000 healthcare organizations worldwide to increase asset visibility, respond faster to staff arrest, reduce patient wait times, and more through cutting-edge IoT solutions. While together, Karen shares her journey from bedside nursing to pioneering connective technologies, how real-time locating awareness unlocks shared asset utilization across facilities, and why she urges innovators to imagine expanded use cases that could further transform point-of-care operations. Join us as Karen reveals how to tap data streams towards revolutionizing healthcare functionality. Let's go. Welcome to Passionate Pioneers with Mike Baselli, where we highlight and speak with the innovators, the game changers, and the pioneers who are deeply passionate and relentless in solving the problems our world is facing today. This is your opportunity to connect with and learn from these leaders and to support them on their mission. Perhaps they will soon be hearing your story as well. This is Passionate Pioneers with Mike Baselli. I look forward to having you on this journey with us. Hi, Karen. A big welcome to our podcast today. Thanks, Mike. I'm thrilled to be here. Well, given your 30 plus years of extensive hospital operations as a nursing executive and your current work and passion to help health systems adopt real-time location systems for their facilities, I'm really excited for this important conversation today. But before we dive in, a bit of housekeeping. While listening to any of our episodes, please take a moment to subscribe to the podcast so you will automatically receive episode updates in your podcast player. Simply search Passionate Pioneers with Mike Baselli and Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. And lastly, please visit the bottom of the episode notes to connect with me on LinkedIn and Twitter in order to further the conversations occurring on this podcast. All right, Karen, it's almost time for our community to learn how you and the Centrac team empowers healthcare leaders to, with actionable data to increase productivity, reduce operating costs, and transform patient care via market-leading locating and sensing IoT solutions. But first, what's that one piece of advice that you would give to others who are passionate about reimagining the health of our world? Thanks for that question, Mike. I would have to answer that by just the quick, easy statement of learning from each other. In my many years of experience, not only in healthcare operations, but also now as a consultant with Centrac, you all know that we have a lot of knowledge to share with one another. So I would encourage you to get out, to learn, and to do that, you've got to listen. Bottom line, always, always, always put the patient and family first. Connect with members and experts from your team who have personal experience in all the relevant areas. But the bottom line, learn from each other. Karen, it's so appropriate for this time. It really resonated with me personally. Here's the reason why. I've spent a long time in this industry and have seen a lot, you know, of change, a lot of innovation and disruption. And of course, then we have COVID-19. And I always say this, you know, 20 plus years now in the industry, the longer I'm in it, it feels like the less I know, meaning it is such a complex industry. There is so much to learn. And so your, your comment about listening to others, working with others, learning, I think is more paramount than ever, especially at the speed of change we're starting to see in healthcare. And it's only going to get faster and faster. This is something I think that is more important than ever. Karen, is this something that uh, you and the team, uh, is this part of uh, the culture that you and the team not only internally have with one another, but also with clients as well? Absolutely. I think we're all in a whole new world now. COVID has done things, uh, I would say, both positively as well as uh, the negative issues that we all live through. But it's really, really helping us to look at things differently, plan differently, we don't have the money to spend like we used to have. So we've got to figure this out. And we have very, very brilliant people all over the world that we need to figure out how to do healthcare differently as well. Yeah, leverage each other. There's no doubt about it. Well, we're going to talk about that, how you and the Centrac team are thinking differently, how you're working with your clients, how you're bettering healthcare. We have so much to discuss. I cannot wait to cover the topics 
that you and the Centrac team are helping solve every day for our industry. We're going to unpack all of that and more after we get back from thanking our community champion sponsor. Healthcare faces a paradox that echoes through generations. While the current practices that help heal patients today are vital, it is crucial to evaluate them through an environmental lens. OSHA's Responsible for Tomorrow initiative is a collection of interviews featuring influential thought leaders and industry experts like you who share their sustainability strategies, insights, and provide valuable perspectives from diverse industries to inspire innovation within the healthcare sector. OSHA invites you to join this journey. Want to share your sustainability story? OSHA is actively looking for partners to highlight the important and inspiring work being done around the globe. Check out OSER's Responsible for Tomorrow initiative and series at OSER.com. That's O-S-S-U-R.com. Or visit the episode notes and click on their link. Together and with OSER helping lead the way, let's all be responsible for tomorrow. All right, we are back with Karen Hewitt, Senior Director of Consulting Services at Centrac. Karen, thank you so much. Teed it up on the front end. You're absolutely correct. This industry is filled with amazing and brilliant people all around the globe. We are now in a moment of time with so much change and so much disruption and innovation, good, bad, or ugly, no matter how you look at it. A lot of change occurring. We need to rely on one another. We cannot continue to do what we're doing in healthcare for so many years. We, As you mentioned earlier, we just don't have the monies to spend like we used to. We have to figure this out, but we got to do it together. And it sounds like that's those are some of the things that you and the team are doing at Centrac. So we're going to talk about Centrac, of course, what you guys are working on today. Love the connected device space personally. But before we do that, want to hear about your extensive experience that led you up to being a senior director at Centrac. You are from the bedside, if you will. You are previously an RN and spent that time directly with those patients, which is incredible and invaluable to be able to help lead an organization like Centrac, that I know for sure. And then, of course, we'll talk a little future state. Where do you and the team see things heading in this very exciting space? And where's the organization going to be? And of course, got to ask how we can be helping you. But before we dive into all of that and more, Karen, take us back a bit. How did this all come to be? You've had a story career, 30 plus years in healthcare. Give us a little flavor. Give us a little taste of how you came to be to becoming the Senior Director of Consulting Services at Centrac. Thanks, Mike. I have to go back many, many uh, decades now to tell you my story, but I am an RN by background, and I will correct you a little bit there. Once you're an RN, you're always an RN. You never get away from that. You are that person that is a caretaker in everything that you do, whether it's your family or patients that we serve. I also have a very, lots of hunger for data. And so as a young RN that worked in the ICU, I was very driven by technology. And keep in mind that this was in the 80s that we're talking. Technology wasn't big back then. We hardly had PCs in hospitals. But I really was restless and I wanted to move up in the organization and get involved with whatever technology was going on. So I found my way into our IT business and ended up staying there for almost 25 years. I served as that liaison that taught the IT geeks, if you will, how to speak the language of clinician and the clinicians to understand what the IT geeks were all about and what they, how they could help them in their day-to-day work. After a couple of years as a real RN in this IT environment, I was tasked with the job of leading the implementation of our electronic patient record at our organization. And it really started my thirst, my knowledge, my drive to continue to work with automation and technology to help our clinicians. I gained an appreciation, knowledge, and respect of all the different players. I learned how to pull teams together. I learned that I was not necessarily the different duck, that we all are different ducks coming together. So within IT, I played a lot of different roles. Ultimately, I ended up being the chief information officer at Sanford Health in Fargo. I had a budget that I was responsible for $99 million and 350 people. I also learned a whole lot about different operational areas in my years of experience at Sanford Health in Fargo, North Dakota. I learned how our folks in health information management work. 
and how important they are. I kind of called them the nervous system of the organization because they had, if you can imagine back in the day, paper charts that eventually now have become electronic patient records that we can interact with wherever we are. So I learned to gain respect and knowledge and learn from everyone that I worked with along the way. Ultimately, my job as a CIO was eliminated because of consolidation and reorganizing within the Sanford organization. I was then asked to take the lead on building a multi-million dollar hospital in Fargo, North Dakota. And I had just the ideal role of leading the operational areas to understand their workflow. And as I said it, to pack their suitcases and get ready to move in. We had a lot of fun doing that and eventually opened the doors in 2017 to a brand new hospital that sits in Fargo, North Dakota. Subsequent to that, my role of that leadership, which was a special projects leader at the time, ended after we opened the doors. My job ended and I was then offered the opportunity to find something else or to enter the consulting world. And I decided that it was time to take a leap and find out what was going on in the rest of the organizations of the world. And that led me to what today is Centrac. My role today as the Senior Director of Consulting Services, in a way, is much narrower than the pieces that I was focused on before. Today, I'm focused on a single application that does amazing things for organizations, but it's much more narrowly focused than what I did having the width and breadth of all the operational areas that I've dealt with in the past. This is amazing technology that I work with. And now I'm able to look across all the health systems that I work with, with a narrow focus on IoT enabling them for real-time location systems. So that's where I am today, Mike. Oh, Karen, what a uh, storied past. And I appreciate you correcting me on the front end because I am married to an RN. And while my spouse is now in a senior leadership role, the RN has never left the household. So I really appreciate that and thank you for the correction. I had to address it as well. So thank you. So Karen, let's talk about that. Now, of course, you've had a storied career. You were, you were with the Sanford system for over a decade, maybe more. And in being in, inside of a health system, the expertise that you gain, that the knowledge that you've collected over those years are a direct help to a company like Ascentrack and then more importantly, to the clients that you serve. And you talked about that you're narrowly focused on your piece of technology. Let's go there. Let's talk about it. I have been really excited to have this conversation with you because I can't wait to learn more about what you're seeing, what you and the team are seeing around IoT, around connected devices. What does that mean for facilities? You know, as well as I do, operationally, it is a tough, tough time for health systems. And so if we can find any any improvement, marginal or otherwise, it can be a significant win for facilities. So let's go there, Karen. Who is Centrac? What are you focused on? And you specifically, what are you really, you mentioned that tighter and laser focus for your own kind of portfolio and your discipline. We'll talk about that as well, but let's start at a higher level. Who Centrac is and what you and the team are offering to the, to the marketplace. You bet. So starting at the 100 foot level, Centrac is an organization that empowers healthcare systems, such as you said, to increase their productivity, reduce their operating costs and transform patient care by using real-time location systems, knowing that you know where your patients are, your staff are, or any assets that you have in your organization. The company was founded in 2007. It is used by over 2,000 healthcare organizations around the world. And it's grown and changed in those years since 2007, where they started as purely a hardware organization. And over the years, they have acquired different pieces of software. And two years ago, my organization came to the table with consulting services as well. So today, Centrac can offer essentially a one-stop shop. There is the ability to put your infrastructure in place, which supports your hardware. 
little widgets in the ceiling that will detect where tags are going and moving around your organization. They now have added the software to support about six different use cases, and I can go over those with you. And now adding consulting services so that you have people like me coming to the table and helping organizations look at how they want to implement this so that they get the greatest value out of each of the use cases that we bring to the table. Let's go to those use cases, Karen. That would be great. I think that's a great segue. I would love to hear those six that your folks on. You bet. Perhaps the one that is the most popular and shows the greatest value is the ability to track assets. When you think about an organization that has thousands and thousands of hard assets running around the organization, needing preventative maintenance by biomed people that have to find and touch this equipment, at least on an annual basis, or nurses that are looking for key pieces of equipment that they need for their jobs. That all is tied up in our asset management implementation. And Mike, it's not just about finding the asset, but it also is really about managing assets. So I can look at the system and I can determine the utilization of my pump fleet and take a look at those numbers. Remember, I said I was kind of a data geek myself, but be able to look at those numbers and say, yes, it's time that we need to buy more pumps or no. In fact, we can open a brand new hospital by taking part of the fleet of pumps that we have, transferring them to a new hospital and not having to have that huge expenditure for additional pumps. So we can do things like that with our asset management software. We can also do par leveling so that if you have been involved in any hospital organizations on each unit or on each floor, you can have expectations that nurses will always have equipment ready for use so that nurses aren't running around looking for things they shouldn't have to. They're busy enough taking care of patients. So with a true asset management system, you can develop those power levels. You can have people replenish those power levels. And bottom line, your nurses know where to find what they need when they need it. So that's just a little bit about asset management. Any questions for me on that one, Mike? No, I think it's important as well. I think, Karen, you know, some of the things that I've heard from some of my friends and colleagues that are in roles at health systems, sometimes these can be powerful tools for You mentioned having a fleet of your pumps going to a new facility. What about all the currently run facilities and sharing assets among them and knowing who has what, when, and where? Because that is obviously helping each other out, that kind of community effect. Do you see that in those use cases as well? Absolutely. And you think about our big IDNs that are out there that have multiple hospitals in many different locations. If they have the visibility of the assets at all of these sites, they too can take a look and say, hey, we need we need a few more over here. We don't need as many over here. I am opening a new business over here. And really sharing is the name of the game when you have the tools that can give you that visibility. Those are just some very, very simple examples of asset management. It can be so powerful. And honestly, we probably see people getting the biggest bang for their buck out of uh, the asset management software because it's tangible and you can actually have a true return on investment if indeed you apply the people and process along with the technology to look at your data and make actionable decisions when you're prompted with things like we just talked about. Well, let's keep going. Talk about the other five offerings if you like as well, Karen. You bet. The second one I would say is probably our most popular right now, and that's our staff duress solution. And staff duress, just because of the way of the world, where we're at today, you see all kinds of things in the news about patients or family members becoming distraught in the healthcare organization and taking it out on nurses or on other professionals. And so we really have focused on how can you use real-time location systems to not only know where the duress situation is, but to get people to that situation as quickly as we can. And so this one, like I said, is probably if you had a hot seller right now, this is our hot seller. 
because of all of the issues that are going on in the world. And so how this works, Mike, is that we have nurses that wear staff badges and these badges have little buttons on them. And if the nurse is in a duress situation, they press the button. And with the technology that we have in place, that button communicates and tells people, you decide what people you want to know, that there's a duress situation in this location. This is the name of the nurse. This is what's going on. And people can get to that situation on a very quick, real-time basis. So that is, like I said, a hot seller. It's a little bit more difficult to show the value because when you're talking about what's the value of a life or what's the value of an injured healthcare worker or what's the value of keeping a healthcare worker in your organization because you have the safety systems to protect them. Those are all the things we think about, safety solutions, such as staff duress. Any questions on that one, Mike? Let's keep going. The next one is probably, I would say, really getting out there into real world. And that is the ability to track patient workflow. There is a lot of value with patient workflow. It's perhaps the hardest of our six use cases to implement. And we really have to have committed people and processes to make it successful. So how patient flow works is that Patients will wear a badge, staff will wear a badge, and what you're able to see is all of the movement of the patients. You're looking at where they stop and wait and waste their time on waiting for people to work with them. You've all experienced this. When you come into the healthcare setting, such as a clinic setting, first thing you do is you check in and you sit down and wait, and then you are roomed in an exam room and you sit down and wait. And then you go get an x-ray and you sit down and wait. So what real-time location systems can do is measure that wait time. It can tell you where you have bottlenecks in your processes. It can help you, again, actionable data that you can turn around and do something with as the owner and look at how you can streamline the processes that you have in these healthcare settings. Some organizations really, really use this information to add more patients to the patients that they're already seeing. So when you think about that from a healthcare operations perspective, you are adding to your revenue as you are streamlining your operations. Would it also be fair to say, Karen, as we continue to think about age caps and patient satisfaction as part of reimbursement as we move towards more, you know, value-based care models, isn't wouldn't that also be true with some of these technologies is, you know, how can we continue to look at the data to improve the experience to then improve those patient satisfaction scores? Absolutely, Mike. I mean, can you imagine, I've even experienced this, patients that first of all are introduced to wearing some type of a tag are first a little bit resistant. And then you talk to them and you say, you know what, the purpose for this is that we're going to know where you are all the time. I can be very attentive to your wait times and we're going to get you out of here and have a much better user experience than what you've seen in the past. And they are, I would say the word is delighted when it works well. So yes, organizations can absolutely add to those HCAP scores and make it an outstanding organization to visit just because of leveraging the technology of real-time location systems. I love it. Well, before we head into future state, I know you have a few more offerings to maybe quickly share. You bet. I'll just touch on a couple of them if you want. We have an infant protection system, and those have been around for a while. But when moms and babies are together in a mom-baby area, you want to make sure that this baby belongs to this mom. And if this baby is taken out of this area, you certainly want to be alerted and know about that. So we do that. We also do environmental monitoring, which is all those refrigerators and freezers that are all over the place in our healthcare organization. We can monitor them centrally. You can see what's going on with all of your medication refrigerators versus other types. And it's another use case that Centrac brings to the table. That one as well, you can see great value because if you have a refrigerator that has research data in it, for example, or 
vaccines. Remember when we went through COVID and the COVID vaccines had to be at an astronomically low temperature? We had tons of environmental monitoring systems that were in use to help make sure that those vaccines were safe for all of us. Well, and of course, looking at the future state a bit, Karen, where you and the team see things heading, and then of course, where Centrac is going to be as well. You know, while you and the team have been around, as you mentioned, since 2007, I think this notion of connected devices, IoT, some people still don't even know what IoT stands for. I still think there's a lot of room for growth in this space. I still think that there's a lot of use cases that maybe we haven't even dreamt up yet that can make direct impacts into healthcare. So with that, Karen, what are you and the team seeing on the horizon called the next two to three, three to five years that we as the audience and the community rallied around this podcast need to be mindful of? And then, of course, anything that uh, Centrac is focusing on in that future state as well. Yeah, Mike, uh, you know, the sky's the limit. And as I started this, you really need to listen to one another and dream. What can this important technology be doing to help us all? Just by the sense of having visibility of your staff and your patients and your assets and your whatever else, fill in the blank, how can that help our healthcare providers? Technology is moving so quickly. The things that even in your own homes were not the Bluetooth enabled world that we live in today. We've got to, we as Centrac, we've got to come to the table and make sure that we can move rapidly and adopt to the new technologies that are out there. We need to learn how to do things less expensively than they are today. And we really need to partner with those healthcare providers that are out there on the cutting edge to make this good for all of us. We win, healthcare providers win, and bottom line, our patients and our staff win. Yeah, but that's the most important thing for sure. So great to hear on that as well, Karen. So let's bring it back a little future state. As I mentioned to you before we started recording, we have an amazing community rally around this podcast and they love to help. They love to help our guests. So what's one problem, need, or question that you and the team have that our community can be helping you with? No, I've been thinking about this, Mike. I think the biggest thing that I could ask the audience for is what are other creative use cases that we should be developing? Where should we be focusing? Some of these innovative hospitals that are creating the healthcare of the future. I know that there are people out there thinking, well, if only we could do this. And how do we marry that with even AI technology so that as a nurse enters the room, not only are they perhaps announced to the patient, but here comes Karen as she walks into, she's your nurse and she's going to take care of you today. I'm looking for what's the next thing out there and how Centra come to the table and be working with you. Love to hear that. Yeah, absolutely. We have some amazing innovators and administrators and you know operators and clinicians that are thinking about these things every single day, tuning in. So if they want to have those conversations with you, Karen, how do they get a hold of you? Social media handles, websites, contact points online. How do they reach out to you? Well, probably best is LinkedIn. I'm out there and, and it's Karen, C-A-R-Y-N, Hewitt, H-E-W-I-T-T. That is probably the best place to meet me and to follow me and to talk to me. That's where I would lead you. Easy enough. And for our listening community, just simply scroll on down into your episode notes for your favorite podcast player where you're listening to this podcast and click on through to get a hold of Karen over on LinkedIn. Or you can head over to our free global online community at passionatepioneers.com. There will be a post for Karen's episode where you can leave comments, feedback, suggestions, or otherwise, and find that contact point for Karen's LinkedIn as well. Again, over at passionatepioneers.com. Well, Karen, this is a very exciting topic, a space that is continuing to grow and grow rapidly in healthcare. It is something that I'm keeping my eye on. I'm very, very excited about the potential of connected devices, IoT, or otherwise, not only inside of hospital facilities, but beyond as we think about care at home or otherwise, huge potential in this space. Love all the things happening within the Centrac team and what you're leading. But before we head out and say our goodbyes, I do have one more piece for you. It's a fill in the blank. I'm a passionate pioneer because I love utilizing and I would say pushing technology to enhance patient care. Absolutely. I love it. Well, Karen, thank you so much for being with us today, for joining up, sharing all of your wonderful history as an RN who is still an RN to this day and will be to continue to be moving forward and all the wonderful work you've done to continue to push our industry forward. Karen, thanks again for being with us today. An absolute honor. Thank you, Mike. It's been fun.
Thank you for joining us today on Passionate Pioneers with Mike Baselli. We'd love to hear your feedback about the podcast so we can continue to improve this community and to further support the pioneers being featured. Lastly, please take a moment to subscribe to the podcast and invite your friends and colleagues to join us. This is Passionate Pioneers with Mike Baselli. I look forward to having you back with us during our next episode.